No interrupt. It's none of your business. Especially if it's my brother and his wife. I got nothing to do with you. Now get out of here. Go inside. Get out. Take the baby inside. In the early 1980s, the hit film Raging Bull helped launch actress Teresa Saldana's career. However, this new fame came with a dark side when a mentally ill man in Scotland became obsessed with her after seeing her movies. Arthur Jackson traveled from Scotland to Los Angeles and on March 15, 1982, waited outside her West Hollywood apartment. When she came outside, he approached her, asked, are you Teresa Saldana? And then, in broad daylight, in front of onlookers, began stabbing her with a hunting knife. A nearby delivery driver named Jeff Finn heard her screams and ran to her rescue. The report said Teresa Saldana was stabbed ten times, and the stabbings were so violent that the blade of the knife was actually bent. And at the hospital, she was pronounced clinically dead. Amazingly, Teresa Saldana not only survived the attack, but two years later, when a TV movie about the incident was made, she played herself. Are you Teresa Saldana? On March 15, 1982, actress Teresa Saldana was viciously attacked and repeatedly stabbed. She barely survived. This is her story. Victims for Victims, the Teresa Saldana story recounts the situations leading up to the attack, the actual attack, and Teresa Saldana's long recovery, both physically and emotionally. To me, the most frustrating issue addressed in this film is one that we probably don't even think about when it comes to someone surviving a horrific attack. The medical expenses. She was in the hospital for months, and insurance only covers so much. How was she supposed to pay for this? The man who tried to kill me is taken care of. He gets free room and board, free medical care. All his expenses are taken care of. Everybody makes sure He's protected, and nothing happens to him, but I'm, suppo I'm supposed to pay. I'm supposed to pay because I got stabbed. Teresa felt victims of violent crimes often get the short end of the stick. She also knew that if she played herself and reenacted the most traumatic moments of her life, it would garner a lot of publicity and hopefully raise awareness and start a dialogue. We plan to work hand in hand with the DA Victim Witness Assistance Program to provide support, advice, companionship, and help. We'd like anyone who's interested to contact us through the DA's office and join us at our first meeting. Although the film ends with Teresa in a good place, the film ultimately has an abrupt and unsettling ending. We are victims for victims. <laughs> You might think an attack like this could lead to a life sentence, but at the time of Arthur Jackson's sentencing, the maximum sentence for his crime was 12 years, with a possible reduced sentence. This leads to another issue. What happens when he gets released? To tackle this issue, Teresa Saldana went in front of the camera and played a victim one more time. Hunter was an extremely popular cop show in the 1980s, and in a 1987 episode, Teresa Saldana guest starred as a thinly veiled version of herself. Instead of being an actress, she's a musician named Jennifer who was attacked by a fan. But then I realized that you're too beautiful to live here on this earth, surrounded by so much that is ugly. And then I knew what to do. <laughs> The plot centers around her stalker being released from prison and is openly threatening her. But due to a lack of laws in the 1980s, law enforcement can't do anything to protect her. I'm afraid if he served his time, there's really nothing we can do about it. Until he kills me. My lawyer told me that way. You can't arrest a person for making threats. 
Not even if he's been violent in the past. Not even if he might be insane. Not only does this episode show us our institution's very flawed laws, it detailed a very plausible scenario for Teresa Saldana. Reenacting the worst moment of her life for a TV movie is definitely courageous, but acting out a very possible future for the show Hunter is a level of bravery I can't even put into words. And life did end up imitating art. In 1988, Arthur Jackson began making open threats towards Teresa Saldana, and just like the episode of Hunter showed us, he was technically not breaking any laws. Until he kills me! In fact, Arthur Jackson was up for parole for good behavior. Teresa Saldana was adamant about him serving his full sentence. Shortly before his parole hearing, Arthur Jackson had an incident in prison resulting in his parole being delayed 270 days. By 1990, law enforcement was successfully able to charge Arthur Jackson for threatening Teresa Saldana, and he was ultimately required to serve additional time. When he was eventually released in 1996, he was immediately extradited to the UK, where he was to go on trial for the 1966 murder of a man named Anthony Robin Fletcher. The trial resulted in Arthur Jackson being sent to a psychiatric hospital. It's easy to paint Arthur Jackson as a one-dimensional monster, but he did suffer from a very real mental illness, and sadly, it seems no treatment available allowed him to lead a normal, healthy life. He ended up spending the remainder of his life in psychiatric institutions until he died in 2004. The man who saved Teresa Saldana's life, Jeff Finn, had wanted to be a cop, and ultimately, he made that happen. As for Teresa Saldana, she went on with her life and ended up having a successful career in acting, most notably starring in the ABC dramedy The Commish, where she was even nominated for a Golden Globe in 1994. Sadly, Teresa Saldana passed away in 2016, but I hope her story, and more importantly, her bravery, lives on. Thank you so much for watching. Biopics where actors play themselves is a topic that I'm actually really interested in, and I'm going to continue to explore this in future episodes. I should have the next episode of this series out next month, which I will put up on the left. But if you can't wait till then, may I suggest this video of mine on the right. And also, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and as always, until next time.